when great humorists and comedians gather late at night over coffee and cheesecake to pay tribute to those among them who have uh, scaled the heights and brought the art of public performing to its zenith, uh, one name, I suppose, stands out above all others. Uh, and it's a talent so unique and so special and so brilliant that in the pantheon of the world's great comics, uh, this man's name will surely be written among the greatest. The incomparable Dan Rickles. <laughs> So sorry about that. It's done, not Dan. No matter. No one sees this anyways. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to say I, I enjoyed Miss Sills. You were tremendous. Thank you. Well, that's it for me. <laughs> Good theater. Wonderful timing. Yes. Well, that's great. That's I've worked good. at ABC. To, I understand that they, uh, they plan to put a wall around this whole place and make it a studio. <laughs> I've been with ABC, and I know I spoke to Elton Rule about you, too. Oh, uh-huh. <laughs> You're gonna love it on the island. <laughs> it's good to see you, though, Dick. Well, it's good to see you. I'm sorry to hear you were ill. I, I uh, heard that you had a little laryngitis. Well, the... yes. Uh, I'm working in the Copacabana, which is a, one of the last of the saloons, and when the cigar messages go up, you just sit there and go, ah! <laughs> Got all the supper club guys in the front going, hey, it's funny. <laughs> <laughs> Get enough you, of those. Yeah, and you keep moving with those kind yeah. of guys, you know? <laughs> I don't know, laryngitis uh, is something I don't picture you having. I mean, well, uh, I really don't care what you picture. Oh, I just <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, the, I mean, when, when, when did you have your own clinic? No, but I mean, the nerve of a disease to attack your famous throat. Uh, well, when you work on the Copacabana, it's a great, great saloon, and I love being in New York, and uh, you really got to go all out. The people are great. Mr. Jules Podell talks like me, and he hasn't even got laryngitis. Uh, yes. He said to me last night, he's a great man. He's some 70 odd years young, you know, and he's full of life and spirit. And he said last night, and he said, uh, oh, if you were to call your club, you're calling people a tight with an item in a paper. And I said, fine. <laughs> oh, you tell him you're wrong, you're on a hook in the kitchen. Sure. <laughs> Two Chinese cook going, oh, look at the guy. <laughs> oh. I really, I really love to watch you work. But then I've always liked Jackie Leonard, so. Uh. <laughs> ah, oh, how can you hit a short guy? <laughs> <laughs> Jackie Leonard's a great, I always get ribbed about that, I you know, know that. He always ribbed But we are, we are completely different. Uh, Jack is doing very well. Uh, He's in Las Vegas with his family, and mm -hmm. we always rib each other about comparing, as you do in opera, I'm sure people compare you. And as long as you're successful and doing well, it's great. It's when you're struggling and they try to wipe you out, then it's rough, you know. Yeah. We were saying that before you came on, how hard it must have been at the very beginning before people knew who you were and, and what kind of, of comic you were. Yeah, well, you know, to nice. suddenly walk into a club <laughs> and he's this guy insulting everybody. Well, and, well uh, I was really before my time, but to be very honest, because today, I do the things that, that are today. And I was doing that 20 years ago. And it's funny how people say, uh, he, he says terrible things. He wipes people out, you know. Yeah. And all I do is laugh at ourselves. And I think there's ways of some people saying, gee, uh, he said uh, some offbeat words or what have you. And I think it's in the eyes of the beholder in the sense that uh, the best way I can des uh, describe what I do, my father, rest his soul, and you were very close to your mother. And I'm very close to my family, too. My dad, rest his soul. He was the kind of a man that put his arms around a woman. And when he did, it wasn't dirty. And there were other guys that give a woman a hug, and uh, right away at the party, your, your wife's looking over at the husband going, Charlie, get Al out of here, you know. <laughs> so it's the way you do something. Yeah. Now, being on this show, like I, I tell Dick from the bottom of my heart, I never liked you. <laughs> <laughs> so you can't be serious. You're an annoying you... little guy. <laughs> is that what it is? That's right, type that hangs around the health club in the corner with the towel. <laughs> I asked you not to mention that. That's terrible. No, I, I, I know it's hard for you to be serious, but it is. Not at all. I think people don't admit that deep down inside, if I may be serious for a moment, that you do something on the stage that all of us would like to do if we had no class. <laughs> and, uh, uh, 
I, I, why, I think... why did you all turn on me like that? <laughs> the guy in the front here in the hockey puck sweater went crazy. <laughs> the one derelict yelled at that. <laughs> People. Uh, we, well. we, we always make jokes. See, I'm always open to being attacked constantly because sure. if you, you know, the old story, if you dish it out, you have to be able to take it. But as far as being serious, uh, I tell you, you have to take your work serious. You, we all become a certain character when we walk out on the stage. Uh, people yeah. say to me, uh, what is it like at home to my wife? You know, and I have a lovely Jewish wife. In fact, she's a monk. Uh, <laughs> she was supposed to come with me today, but she couldn't get off the bed. The jewelry was too heavy. <laughs> We'll, we'll delve into your private life a little more after oh, this fine. station break. We'll be right back. <clears throat> oh, you can tell a minute the light goes on. Beverly and I were planning to leave. That's it's wonderful. A minute the light, hit, the light hits your face, you blossom and bloom. And That's great, Dick. It. Well, we have to, you know. You're, you're you not feel... exactly the guy I'd pick to go to the New Year's Eve party with, you know? <laughs> oh, I always I... picture you at New Year's Eve alone in the corner with a spoon of ice cream going, oh, wow. <laughs> Very Just per, don't light it up for me. Very perceptive. Mm. Say, are you going to be doing a new television series or your old one again? Well, I was on ABC and that took a hike. Uh, <laughs> took a hike. I was on CBS and a guy came over and went, I said, yes. He said, you're through. <laughs> really classy way of oh, letting you. President Bob Wood is a good friend of mine. In fact, he started his car today and he isn't around anymore. <laughs> uh, No, Bob anything. Wood has been very good to me. CBS, uh, I had my, a show on ABC, which was a complete catastrophe because working for ABC and Elton Rule and all the gentlemen are good friends of mine. The problem is they couldn't chip in to get any money for the show and we were appearing in a forest. Uh, <laughs> one guy with scotch tape and a lamp going, let's try it again, Charlie. <laughs> uh, no, you know that. You and I know ABC is a big network. They had a storm yesterday and the whole set went out. There was one guy on the roof at the ABC building going, is the wind okay, Al? <laughs> so, uh, and CBS has a big organization. In other words, when you fail there, they, a buzzer rings in your room and you go, <laughs> I was around NBC yesterday, and the guy at the gate said, go away. <laughs> but uh, no we're going to do another all, special on CBS, which I'm thrilled about, yeah. because uh, we, uh, we had a show on, uh, as I say, on CBS, and unfortunately, that didn't make it, because I have to be what I really am. And unfortunately, uh, on the ABC uh, adventure that we had with Pat McCormick, our mutual friend, right. uh, we didn't have the right format. Uh, when we uh, went on CBS, uh, they wanted to try to make Don Rickles appear something I'm really not a charming, adorable man. Uh, but you are a good actor. Well, thank you. And you you're managed good. to appear that once or twice during the, during the series. Thank you. No, I'm trying to give you're, you a compliment. You're starting to get on my nerves. Today. Yeah, I can see that. I'll but, back uh, off now. Uh, so uh, we, uh, we have decided to do what we do best, and that is to uh, laugh at people, make fun of life, and bring this guy forward in, in, this, in this particular special. Uh, that we're going to do for CBS, I think uh, the real Rickles will, will come out. Oh, that's good. Uh, right now, talking to you is kind of the regular Rickles, which would only help me win a trip to Hawaii with the wife. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, coming out real. being charming and nice, you only get on the Monty Hall show and win a cookie, you know. <laughs> so I have to be what I really am. Yeah. Right? This whole front row here, uh, I, I am what I am, the man on the end. Take a look at that man. Oh. <laughs> I don't know who you are, but you're a bad looking man. <laughs> Look at that, the lady went, he knows you. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Oh, no one ever, <laughs> just don't look down there. No one has ever uh, really seriously in, uh, invited you out into the alley afterwards, have they, at a club? You did, but it was ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> we danced for about an hour. <laughs> no, I mean, no, a guy uh, with no many, sense many of humor. Ago, you know, like, many, many say. years ago, I worked in the smart supper clubs in Jersey when I walked out and called somebody a dummy and the boss went, oh, what? And uh, all of a sudden, I, I was in the alley, and my tie was over here. I, no, not really. Uh, I, uh, I always have Blue Cross and a fast cab. Those are your two secrets. So people pretty much knew I was joking. Those that didn't uh, asked me to leave, you know. Uh, I worked up in Montreal once, and I left with a hockey puck in my mouth. <laughs> it was a fast engagement. Yeah. But I was pretty lucky. I mean, I've, I've had people that have been offended and I've had people that love me but I'll tell you in anything you do I'm sure it's that way in opera if you just go the ordinary line and just have the general approach 
You'll be the average guy. If you believe in what you do and you cause excitement, you're going to get people that say, I love them or I can't stand them, and so be it. There's one thing, though, I really do wonder, and that is, do you actually think before you speak most of the time or half the time, do you actually hear what you've said as you say it? or do you Well, no. I think in a nightclub, on television, I think in a talk show such as this, you monitor yourself mm -hmm. uh, instinctively, you, you know, because you, you just don't have the complete freedom that you really want. In a nightclub, I, uh, I, I, I go with a performance, mm -hmm. but uh, whatever's in front of me that night is what inspires me. But it's so fast that there can't, there's not an, an instant of thought in there. Yes, I mean, it, it is, just comes Dick. right out. It's yes, really... it's very good, Dick. <laughs> <laughs> so fit. Anybody got a lolly for Dick? <laughs> it's so fast. You want to stay up late tonight, Dick? <laughs> Put on your pajamas and have hot cocoa? <laughs> Talk well, to him. I feel well, like I want to go to summer camp and sit in the pan. I'll try to change moods. It's kind of fast and exciting. Yeah, Dick. Uh, what, what? I remember your act, you know. Had that great beat, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you were like Jimmy Cook. Yeah, of course, a Ruban Blue type. And, you know, the, what they call the shishi humor, mm -hmm. you know. While the violin is playing, you can look up at him, drink, have dinner, leave, and he doesn't even know about it. <laughs> I never played the Ruban Blue. Well, but you're that type of performer, the low, oh, low key, as oh, we that, say in the Is business. that what we call it? Well, you know that. You know, yeah. you were a writer. You know, you've given a shot at everything. And <laughs> after this, it's, you know, where to, sir? <laughs> anyway, uh... <laughs> oh, we have, we have to stop and wind up again. We'll be right back. Okay. Here we are. <laughs>